is a Bluegrass Goose 42 GM. This is a master grade torrified red spruce top, uh, Adirondack top. This is impossibly beautiful Brazilian mahogany on the back and sides. This has koa binding. The GM, there are two things in that you need to know. Number one, that's the gold pack. So with the gold pack, you get these gold goto tuners that are beautiful and articulate. And they were very subtle touch for a beautiful and not necessarily traditional guitar. I love the gold pack usually, and this video is sponsored by Tallman Music because, and they didn't pay me anything. I don't get any commission when I sell, uh, when Boucher's sell as a result of these videos, but I get paid a little bit and uh, I get to intercept guitars as they're heading to Rick Tallman, who's an amazing, if you're looking for a Boucher in the US, there's no one better uh, than Rick and Tallman guitars. But one of the things that Rick loves doing is the gold tuners. And so uh, the gold pack is a beautiful upgrade to this guitar. So it also works really well with that iridescent abalone rosette. Now, the other things that are worth talking about on this guitar is that this guitar is a master. So that's what the M in GM stands for. The top on this guitar is master grade Adirondack spruce. Now, it is also torrified. Now, Boucher, uh, they have told me that they rate between 15 and 20,000 guitar tops each year. And of those, only about 50 ever meet all of the criteria to be properly labeled a master grade top. So this is impossibly great materials uh, on the top, back, and sides. Now, the back and sides, we should also talk about they are Brazilian mahogany. Now it's a really light color and it's very ribbony, lots of vertical grain to it. Um, and it pairs really well with the Koa binding. Now this is, I mean, all of the other bouchets that have been sent to me have been rosewood back and sides. And I think there was a BG 52 that came to me last year and that guitar made me, but all bouchets have made me check my bank account and made me think, okay, I need to start saving up for that. And, uh, and I've got, I've got a sinking fund that is working just on, you know, buying my next perfect boutique, wonderful guitar. So anyway, more about that later. But, uh, so all of that, this guitar, uh, let's talk about this guitar in light of a three question gear review. What's good about this guitar? What's bad about this guitar? And if you're in the market for a hand built boutique guitar, should you buy this guitar? Question number one, what's good about this guitar? The master grade top and the the incredible Brazilian mahogany on the back and sides. Now, Brazilian mahogany is such a rare, special, wonderful, and expensive option. This will be just as expensive as East Indian Rosewood. Now, what's great about that is that you're not gonna have to spend a ton more money uh, above and beyond. Like, you're not paying for Madagascar Rosewood, Macassar Ebony, you're not adding thousands of dollars, you're adding some money. So you will be on par with East Sydney Rosewood, but it's not gonna break the bank in the way that those other tone woods would be. Now, the other things that are really good about this guitar, this guitar is an inch and three quarter nut width. So it's called a bluegrass goose, but this guitar doesn't necessarily get stuck into bluegrass. This is way more than a bluegrass guitar. And uh, so with the inch and three quarter nut width, it feels really reminiscent of really high end breed loves, some of the master grade breed loves. It reminds me of, modern takes on traditional guitars. So it feels like it threads that needle really well between, yes, it's a traditional sounding guitar and you could play all the Doc Watson you'd ever wanna play on a guitar like this. You could do whatever you want with this in that regard, but it also feels nimble and able and capable and there's room uh, for doing all kinds of finger style things. So that's why, I mean, this guitar, they've got my number for sure on this guitar. That nut with uh, mahogany back and sides. Now let's talk about the mahogany as well. Now the other guitars, mahogany's always been downplayed as a budget option, a working musician's option. And with this, this is just highlighting mahogany in all of its beauty and all of its beauty. The abalone rosette, there's so much good about this guitar. Uh, everything about this is really playable, really accessible. It's a really, really great guitar.
Now, let's shift gears into what's bad about this guitar, or what are things that are, and there, there are preferential things, and there are bad things in manufacturing. Thankfully, there are no bad things in the production of this guitar. It is a proper dovetail joint neck. Uh, these always feel like, and I, you know, I've avoided saying this in the past, but here we go, buckle in. Um, because of the tweed cases, that's the first thing. Like when you see the tweed case of a Boucher, you think, oh, that's a House and Dalton, but it's a Boucher. And then you smell them and you play them and you feel them and you're like, wow, these are really similar to Huss and Dalton. I think this is better than a Huss and Dalton. For what it is, uh, for what this thing is just in all of its glory and construction and how they put it together, the dovetail joint neck. I mean, this is just an incredible guitar. And um, so anyway, what is bad about this guitar? Structurally manufacturing, there is nothing I can say. The finish is impeccable, but there are things that preferentially aren't my thing. I love mahogany guitars, but I don't love how fair, how light this is. Now I understand part of it is you want to show the the materials of your guitar as accurately as possible. Like that's why I use these Lawton audio microphones. I want them to sound like the room. I want them to work like your ears. So in the same way, I can understand building a guitar where the finish is clear and there's no aging tone or there's no uh, dye to it. There's no stain to it. It is just the color. And that's what's interesting is when you look in the sound hole versus the back of the guitar, it's the same color. But I don't, preferentially for me, there's not enough contrast between the Koa and the Mahogany. And so for me, I would rather have it just a little darker uh, for the Mahogany or maybe do a maple binding. Do something with just a little more contrast. There's plenty of contrast on the top, but when you come to the back and sides. Anything else I don't like about this guitar? Um, I don't know, this one's a freaking cannon. Uh, I like it a lot. The Torfight top, sometimes this little dark streak down the middle gets me a little. Again, completely preferential, but the benefits of having a Torfight top compared to that little dark bit down the middle, that's trade off I would make. Uh, so I have nothing really bad to say about this guitar. It's expensive, but it's a boutique guitar. Boutique guitars are expensive, but this is five times the amount of guitar you would get from a Martin, even from the custom shop. This is better than a custom shop. Pretty much all boutiques are better than Martin custom shops. But hey, there's another controversial opinion. That arrives us at the third question, which is, if you're in the market, should you buy this guitar? So who would be in the market for this kind of guitar? This is, I think, the name, the name is a misnomer to me. Like calling these a, a bluegrass goose, um, calling them bluegrass at all, sends your brain in a direction that if I would just walk into a shop and pick up this guitar, I would not think, wow, I bet that's a great bluegrass guitar. I bet I could play, you know, blah, 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 whatever bluegrass. I'm not a bluegrass player and this guitar doesn't bring it out of me, but it does bring a faster right hand. It brings a lot of like that bouncy, fast cross picking. Uh, yeah, this guitar. So who is this for? This guitar is for a dynamic kind of guitar player. If you're imagining how to organize a guitar tone and how to classify it in your mind, one of the tools I use is I go really specific versus really broad or, or general sounding guitars. And then I go uh, bright to dark. And so also there's a whole lot more on that, how I classify and how I build a collection in a guitar course that I have called Write Guitars Faster. I've thought about this and I've waxed philosophical about how to figure out which guitars to own to build a collection that is meaningful to you. And that's how I use it for the guitars that I have with me. But this guitar is very diverse sounding. It's very, it's very capable and it can do a lot of things. It doesn't sound super specific. You could push this to make it sound very specifically like other guitars. This would be a great recording guitar because you could just put it in the background and make it sound like a big rosewood dread. You could also play really articulate and light and make it sound like a small body. This guitar is super capable. As far as bright versus dark, this guitar is uh, more bright, but has a lot of gas in the tank, a lot of punch. And so this guitar fits really firmly. So who is this guitar for? This guitar is for someone who needs to cover a lot of ground and they want an exceptionally good guitar. It's also someone who is not overly bound to tradition, but they want a guitar with amazing features. And also someone who 
doesn't feel the peer pressure to get Rosewood, this is the right guitar for you in that. So all of that to culminate that question into one clear answer. If you are in the market for a hand-built guitar with amazing features that it's really capable and diverse, I cannot recommend Boucher as a brand more highly. Now, remember, I don't get paid for any commission. They pay me money. They pay for my time. They don't pay for my opinions on these videos. And I don't even get to keep these guitars. And when I have them, I only... I have to be very careful with them. I don't own a Boucher yet. I'm working on it. But with all of that said, um, I work really hard to only bring in guitars that I really like. And so for this guitar, and I forget the exact price on this guitar. This guitar is going to be five or six. I'll put the exact price up here. But this is an expensive guitar. But for the kind of musician that this guitar is, I don't think you could get any better. I only have preferential things. I wish the back was a little darker. I wish that the binding was a little more contrasty, but I didn't spec out this guitar. Someone spec'd out this guitar, and I'm sure it's going to be amazing and perfect for them. So thanks for watching this video. I'm Jeremy, I'm the Guitar Hunter. This is a Boucher BG42 Masters Grade. GM? GM, not MG. And uh, this is an amazing guitar. Thanks to Boucher for letting me borrow this guitar. Thanks to Tallman Music for letting me intercept this guitar from Canada to you. And uh, this guitar will be for sale and you have to strike quickly because these guitars do not last when they go to such a good retailer as Tallman Music. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later.